Welcome to Discovering. What do you do when it's 65 degrees in early March? In the UP, you go skiing. This weekend is Rural Bash at Ski Rural. It's somewhat of a homecoming for our guests. And we'll stop at UP Hunter's Gunsmithing for some useful information when buying ammo. It's all tonight, so sit back, put your feet up. It's Monday night and time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan Disappearing snow across the UP tells us that spring is here, or at least very close. This conjures up a whole new list of outdoor activities, but that doesn't necessarily mean we have to let go of the typical winter activities just yet. The ability to make snow means that when the rest of the ground is, well, ground, many ski hills are still in full swing. This provides for the unique combination of a cold weather activity on a warm weather day. I traveled southwest of Iron River to Ski Brule for the annual Brule Bash and a taste of their weekly event known as the Homestead Barbecue. It is March at Ski Brule and we're 100% open. Typically Ski Brule is open until the third weekend of April. We've been open as late as May the 16th. Our record opening was October 24th. That happened about eight years ago. This year is a little unseasonably warm. It was 65 degrees today at Ski Brule, but we're still 100% open. The slopes were amazing. Myself, I was out there probably for three hours today, just loving life. This weekend is Rural Bash at Ski Brule. It's somewhat of a homecoming for our guests. We've been doing it for, I think, since the 70s. And if you wear a costume on Rural Bash weekends, your lift tickets are half price. There's costume contests both Saturday and Sunday. And the winner wins the season's pass for next season. Free sled dog rides, free moon bounce petting zoo, face painting, little mini events all weekend long, including snow bowling, penguin races, mattress races, Pie eating contest, minute to win it cookie contest, so it's a great family filled weekend. Yeah, well, uh, Ski Brule just invited us out. Uh, as, I mean, we're Iron Line race directors, but on the side, we've just got some, you know, recreational dogs. Let's go, guys. Come on, pup. It's been nice to just get them out and let kids. Uh, from lower in the Midwest. We've had a lot of people from Green Bay, Milwaukee area, Wisconsin, further south, you know, that don't get to see a lot of this win unique winter stuff that we have here in the UP. So we're taking them out on some sled dog rides and they've really enjoyed it. It's, it's always cool seeing the look on the kids. I had two little boys that were just hooting and hollering all the way around. So they're having a great time. Ski Brule is, has been voted repeatedly as the number one family resort in the Midwest. We're dedicated to guest services and being the nicest, most friendly outgoing resort anywhere in the world, I would say. We're only 500 vertical feet. We're never going to be the grand, uh, grandiose 3,000 vertical feet that they have out west, but we can do one thing better than anybody else, and that's be the nicest, friendliest place anywhere. So Ski Brule is a 3,000 acre resort. We're standing right now at the Ski Brule Main Lodge, which holds our lodging office, the Bears Den Pro Shop, our cafe, the 
Rural Saloon and Guest Services. We're open daily during the winter time and in the summertime, the Bears Den Pro Shop and guest services along with Brule Sporting Clays and the lodging office are open. And then down the hill from where we're at right now is the Ski Brule Rental Center. We're able to outfit approximately 2,000 people with ski or snowboard equipment a day. And we have a kids center there for children ages four and up to learn how to ski along with a daycare center too. Complete with their own moon bounds and two little Brule bunnies in the kids center. There are 17 trails, 11 lifts, longest run is a mile. There's 500 vertical feet with 150 skiable acres of terrain. We have two snowboard and skis parks along with the Bambi playground which is filled with rails and boxes for the people that just can't, don't want to get off the slopes off of riding the rails or beginners. Then Mid Mountain is the Homestead Lodge which is an actual homestead that was built back in the 1800s that we restored. The one peak is where the homestead originally sat. The second peak was another homestead that was approximately a mile from here that we picked up and relocated next to the other peak and we connected the two. During the day at Ski In and Ski Out, there's a restaurant and a bar, a place to warm up. The only source of heat at the homestead lodge are two pot belly stoves. The interior is decorated with farm implements that were used to work the land. It was owned by the Oberg family, which is a local family here in Iron River. Still, some Obergs are in the area. And on Thursdays and Saturday nights, you can take a free sleigh ride up to the Homestead Barbecue from 5 until 8 o'clock. It includes an all-you-care-to-eat dinner with our famous pulled pork, barbecue chicken, sauerkraut, baked beans, mashed potatoes, salad, rolls, applesauce, beverage, and chocolate cake. So we're over here at the Homestead Lodge right now. Uh, we have the barbecues every Thursday and uh, Saturday night. We have a sleigh ride that takes you up. It's pulled by a groomer and you could even ride in the groomer as well. Then when you come inside, it's very rustic, unique, different atmosphere. Original building, it was modified a little bit to add a little more space to it, the Homestead Lodge. They have the Homestead Act inside, uh, signed by the President, and that is definitely something that a lot of people love to see. It's unique, something that we don't really see very often. So on Thursdays and Saturdays, uh, when the mountain closed down at 4 o'clock and you still want to hang out at the lodge, have some fun here at Brule, not go back to your Pioneer or your chalet, we have the barbecue. It starts at 5 o'clock. Just simply give us a call at the lodging office or stop in rental, Bears Den, any location. They'll call the shuttle for you on the radio. It's no cost, the shuttle, to come up here. Um, that's free, so you just call. Uh, the groomer ride up here is no cost for that. And the shuttle will pick you up, bring you over to the back side of the mountain where we have the groomer with the sleigh that will bring you up to the Homestead Lodge. It's a fun ride, the kids love it. You can even go inside the groomer as well, which is a lot of fun. And then when you're here, we have all the barbecue, drinks, sledding, the animals that are here. Again, it's just a lot of fun for the whole family. Great barbecue, we have the chicken going on all day, pulled pork, people love the food, and we have sledding over here as well. So the parents want to go inside, hang out for a little bit, kids go outside. 
go tubing. It's from five to eight, like I said, every Thursday and Saturday night. And it's just a lot of fun for the family. The barbecue itself, it's $12 for adults, $8 for juniors, and six for kids. So it's nice family pricing, the whole family can enjoy it. At the Homestead Lodge, we do have drinks as well, adult beverages. We have a couple beers on tap and a full stock shelf of liquor as well. So if your kids are out tubing and you want to have a little cocktail with your significant other or your friends, we have plenty of options for you. So it's fun for all ages, doesn't matter whether you're a kid or an adult, it's fun for everyone. I stopped by UP Hunter's gunsmithing in Powers and talked with Steve about the importance of matching your gun to the ammo. Last fall, I had a couple of occasions, kind of back to back, of customers that came in and they, want, they were buying ammunition, or going to buy ammunition, and they had specified that they needed to get a particular brand. Well, I, I don't sell ammunition, but I would recommend something for them. They thought that because the caliber name, for instance, 7mm Remington Mag, would mean that they had to use Remington brand of ammunition. While that is not true, there are bunches of different brands of ammunition that you could use in brands, as long as you bought in the proper caliber. There are things you need to be aware of when you go and buy your ammunition. For instance, uh, the caliber name only specifies the caliber. 7mm Rem Mag, 338 Win Mag, 300 Savage, but that doesn't mean that you have to use the brand that is mentioned in the caliber. There are a plethora of brands of ammunition available. The caliber name, this one in particular being 308 Winchester, the Winchester portion of the name signifies the company that developed that particular caliber specifically when it was, shall we say, invented. The information found on the packaging is what you need to be reading, not necessarily the brand. For instance, this is Remington ammunition, the Remington brand. Each brand is going to be specified. You also need to look at the bullet weight and the type of bullet that's used. Most of the boxes of ammunition nowadays in modern times specify the specific bullet that is used in that particular loading. And then there's also ammunition boxes that are now specifying the particular loads would be suitable for, whether it be for varmint, medium-sized game, which would be your deer, big game, which is larger animals such as the elk, and then there's dangerous game uh, loads available as well. When you're looking at your box of ammunition to select for what you're going to be doing with, with that particular uh, loading, not only would for varmint loads the bullet be a lighter weight, but the jacket thickness would probably be thinner. For your medium size game, the bullet design would be such that it would hold together adequately for taking deer size game. Those would be of various constructions based on who manufactured the bullet itself. Your larger game, such as elk or bear, you would want a heavier bullet in grain weights, and it would probably be designed with a much stronger jacket. Typically, for deer size game, which is what we would normally or most frequently be shooting up in this area, uh, your 165 grain bullets would probably be one of the most common. With your 7 millimeter Remingtons, most often for deer size game, you would probably be looking at a bullet weight of approximately 140 grains. If you were going to go out west for elk, you would probably want to step up to a 160 grain bullet in your 7 millimeter mag and you can go up to 180 grain, it's very common, in your uh, 30-06 loadings, for instance. 
When selecting the ammo for your particular rifle, choose a brand that you're comfortable with. By and large, you want to stick with the major manufacturers. Then select the caliber for your particular firearm that you're buying the ammunition for. Then get the load that is suitable for the size of game that you're hunting. Buy a box of that am ammunition that you've chosen, then go out and sight in your rifle for the ammo that you've just purchased. Once you've got it sighted in, then you want to shoot it for group. By that we mean you want to take a minimum of three shots at a target, and then you want to measure, physically measure, the size of your group. Factory uh, specifications for accuracy for instance, Weatherby will guarantee an inch and a half group at 100 yards. Some of them will specify that that particular firearm should shoot one inch group or better at 100 yards. And your particular application or your preference, what you need for accuracy for the type of shooting that you're doing, would determine whether it's acceptable or not. If the final group size is not suitable, it's too large or it's a group that is scattered, then you'll want to look at purchasing a different brand and then repeat the process shooting that one for group. You won't have to sight it in necessarily, but shoot it for group. Minimum of three shots. Some people prefer a five shot group. Three shot group will tell you enough to whether this particular load is going to work well in your firearm. If that group is satisfactory, recite in for that one and then go back and record all that information so that you stick with the same ammunition each time that you make a new purchase for that firearm. Some firearms are very particular about what ammunition, bullet, brand, and so forth that it prefers. If the first one that you had chosen does not work out satisfactorily, try another. Now, if you do several of these and you still find that you're not getting adequate accuracy, your three-shot group is not small enough, perhaps you do have a problem and you need to go visit your local gunsmith. There are sometimes problems that, that can be corrected and that will tighten up your group. But normally you can get a new rifle to shoot within the factory specifications. <music>
they didn't need the wood and they didn't need the sawmill and they were you know getting into the steel a lot more by then they were well into it um, donated the town along with 1700 acres to Michigan Technological University to the forestry department they own and operate it today they have one heck of a um, forestry program here and the nice part about it is is the students can actually get out into the woods and take advantage of those 1700 acres it's their classroom they have a big classroom out there for the forestry program it's great um, I was the last head Sawyer in here right up until September of 1981. 96 I started it up because uh, we had to dismantle some of the electrical stuff outside that was kind of deteriorating. So we ran 14 logs through here in 1996 and we videoed it because there was no documentation of this mill ever running. And uh, you know under Ford or anybody or under Michigan Tech so we did did some video and uh, got it actually running. So that so was the last time it actually ran. But for, for tech, the research project was 1981. And it's designed, it's got the old locomotive. This was steam operated, everything. For Ford, it was steam operated up until 54. Um, everything was steam, the carriage, and it was all run that way. Then tech converted it over to uh, electric, hydraulic, and air and put in a different carriage, but this is the original steam engine right here. It's an old locomotive type, which, you know, if you think back 1935, this was modern. This was really something. It was, it was his showpiece. He was really, really proud of this little town. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, it's the American Legion Post 438 2016 Gun, Knife and Outdoor Show, March 25th and 26th at the Bark River Senior Center. The event runs from noon till 7 on Friday and 9 to 3 on Saturday. Admission is only 5 bucks for both days. And food and refreshments are available on site. For contact information, go to 906outdoors.com and click on Discovering. And turkey hunters remember, as of March 15th, any remaining spring turkey hunting licenses are available anywhere DNR licenses are sold. Well, that's it for tonight. If you'd like to keep tabs on what's coming up on Discovering or see where we've been, you can join us on Facebook or go to 906outdoors.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering.